So, yep, I know exactly what you're thinking. This is not a brand new car, the Mazda 6. This is a refresh model. So why am I driving it? Well, it is such a good car that it deserves a review. This update that they've done may not visually look massively different from the original, but they've tuned so many things in it. It actually makes the car a totally different experience to drive. You see, what Mazda have done here is take an undesirable, at the moment, undesirable tree box saloon and really ramp it up. They've really done something with it. They've also made this version an estate as well, which is what I was driving around in, in Romania when I was testing the new Mazda MX-5. But this one, although it's long, it's long, and in Ireland, this car actually starts at about 31 and a half grand. And this one that I'm driving right here, well, this one is a shade over 40 grand. But let's have a look inside. Oh, beeping already. In the front seat is where Mazda has really worked this out very well. The Jin Bai Tai, Horse and Rider and One, the Sky Active system, all these buzzwords they use, they all start to come together and you're actually sitting here. Meaningless to you, I'm sure, but for the most part, they're good marketing speak. So I have a dual zone climate control on manual knobs. I like knobs. Also heated seats, heated steering wheel is here in the front as well. CD player, CD player, for real, it's actually here. Um, Mazda's own proprietary system on the infotainment system is not deadly. In fairness, it is pretty much a boring affair, but it works. Functionally, it's fine. You get sat and having a whole lot of it. Plug in an iPhone, you get Apple CarPlay, and it manages to be a kind of a dead touch screen. It's like it's not working sometimes, and then other times it is working perfectly, which is kind of weird, but still, it works. That's important. It means you can go into your music, um, and you can go back, and you don't have to use this knob in the center here which is useful you can use it but it's like it's like the audi system it, it's very clunky when it's not a touch screen uh, so this works perfectly in the fact it has google maps as well of course now google maps has been added to uh, apple carplay that works fine as well uh, you don't have to use that of course you can use apple maps should you want to whatsapp has also been added to apple carplay so they're both there really easy to use literally plug in your phone uh, answer I think one or two questions and up she pops on the screen fit and finish in here exceptional absolutely outstanding fit and finish the materials used are brilliant the way it's put together is absolutely gorgeous it feels substantial it feels like I'm driving a very high spec high-end luxury car as it should for its 40 grand price tag for this one starting at 31,000 here in Ireland this one has active cruise control and active lane keeping, automatic wipers, automatic lights. Look at the list of stuff in this car goes on. It's, it's about 8,000 euros worth of options on this car uh, and it seems to be worth it. It also has a Bose sound system in it, which is outstanding. So the back is exactly as you would expect it to be. I have room here for my head just. Um, the slope of the door on the back, that kind of curve just along the back of the door here. You can bump your head on that fairly handy, but the door, the seat itself when you're actually in is fine. Plenty of space back here. A little, as my daughter's called it, Ella in the middle. Uh, armrest in the center here, works fine. You've got three seat belts across. I wouldn't fancy sitting in this middle seat in fairness to it because you know that middle seat hasn't got a whole lot of room in it. I have an air vent back here that I can adjust if the air comes out or not. And that's about it. So some back rests and things and nothing much else. Now look, this being a saloon, the space for the opening is a bit odd because it's a saloon, because you know it's, it's hard to get this out of the way. When you get the hatchback, the estate version of it, tons of room. But the actual booth space is quite deep. It goes right the way back. Uh, plenty of space for everything. There is no spare. It does have some covers and extra storage things and stuff in here this by the way is where the ad blue tank is is in here and it has a little toolkit no spare that i can find so far so that's a demerit point right there those stone chips you're hearing going up there that's because i'm on a gravel road and still the six manages to be comfortable i've never really how would i explain this 
There's a lot going on in the Mazda 6. Usually, I complain that Mazda make their suspension system too sporty. So every time I go to a, a press conference with Mazda, any of them, European, Irish, makes a difference, they all talk about the Mazda MX-5 and how sporty it is and how two-door roadsters are the future or the past or something like that, between the two. And so when you, even if you're at like the CX-5 launch, which is an off-road car, they go on about the MX-5. Here we are in the Mazda 6, and I detect very little of the MX-5. Aside from one salient thing that I really, really appreciate, that gearbox is the best gearbox in the world. I don't know what kind of torque level it's able to hold, I couldn't tell you, that's irrelevant. Right now, that gearbox, when you want to switch gears, I, I, God, I'm gonna use a really old fashioned way of saying this, but the gear stick falls to hand, just where it's supposed to be, just when you want it to be there. Now, just a moment of appreciation here for how quiet the car is. I'm in fifth gear, I'm doing 70 kilometers an hour. I'm on a back road in the car. I haven't turned the air conditioning off, the radio is turned off. That's it. Silence. And it's like that pretty much, that doesn't really get any louder when you go out in the motorway. It's pretty much the same. Comfort, as I've said before, I've done a thousand kilometers in this car, not a bead of it. Now that, you just heard there a second ago, is me touching the white line. If you go near the white line in this car, it plays the bass line from Pill. Ow! Hello! Hello! So Mazda are going really petrol, but this is a 2.2 litre diesel, which you can still buy in Ireland, don't get me wrong. This will still sell long after petrol is taken over and electric cars are flying, the diesel will still sell here. We are hung up on fuel. Um, the problem is that fuel economy, as I said earlier, when I was driving the car, I drove it for like 600 kilometers, then I drove to Galway and I needed a 10 euro petrol and then, or diesel, then I put another 10 euro this morning means that a full tank will get you around to make no difference about 800 kilometers and that's about it. Uh, it needs a bigger fuel tank Mazda, I'm sorry. I know you're all into uh, Jin Bai Tai and, and Sky Active and making things lighter and all, but really this needs a bigger fuel tank just to compete, just so I should be able to do a thousand kilometers. If I could do a thousand kilometers sitting in this, it wouldn't matter if the fuel tank was 75 liters. So why would you even look at a tree box saloon at the moment? Everything seems to be going the direction of the crossover, the soft rotor, and that sort of stuff. Well, look, there's good value. Right now, this segment contains really good value. It may not look at a 40 grand car, you think, wow, how, what's good value about that, Bob? Seriously. But I have absolutely every modern convenience on this car. Apple CarPlay, Google Android, heated seats, heated steering wheel, active cruise control, leather dash, I've got a lot like, and it's supremely comfortable. I mean, beyond anything else that the Germans have made, this is outstandingly comfortable. And it handles a bit, it's a Mazda, so it's always going to be a little bit sporty. It handles it, but the ride doesn't seem to suffer from that handling. Now, although it's not completely new, it's definitely one of my favorite cars this year. Thanks very much for watching. Hopefully by now you've hit that subscribe button um, and you checked out the links down below. Don't forget to join me on my new channel, the Sunday Service Channel, which is its own dedicated live stream channel every Sunday at 2 p.m. for a live chat. Uh, but until the next time, I will see you on the far side. Morning, you find me again at a petrol station getting diesel for uh, this Mazda 6. Um, it hasn't gone very far on the diesel that I had in it and I don't know where the diesel is after going because it has a 62.2 litre fuel tank in it. Even if you take away 5 litres of that for Ad Blue, you're still left with over 55. So, hmm, I should have to investigate because the fuel economy says 5.5 litres per 100 kilometres, which is really good. But I'm not getting that, or it doesn't look like I'm getting that.
It's a real uh, bright winter's day. Look at the last dregs of diesel out. <laughs> the actual listed price up there on the petrol thing is 138.9 for diesel. 146.9 for diesel for petrol here in Port Leash. That's uh, what's it called? Great gas, it's actually called. It's rock and roll. Okay, full clarity here. I have been on a motorway most of the week. Um, we also drove to Galway on Sunday. Uh, and I had to put a tenner in before I went to Galway. So, what you're looking at at 5.4 litres, 100 kilometres, 998 euro has, or 998 kilometres has been a full tank of diesel. Plus 10 euro, plus I'm about to another 10 euro into it now, just to get it back up to double. So there's a detail missing from that video that I didn't know at the time. The 62.2 litre tank has actually got a 10 litre ad blue tank, which makes it feel like you're in a petrol station the whole time trying to get fuel, but actually the fuel economy is really good. So maybe a bigger fuel tank would be a big help. Anyway, thank you for watching this far into the video. Until the next time, I'll see you on the far side.